All right. What an exciting way to, be to begin this discussion of the Deluxe Drugs category write-up. Okay, what we've done so far, I sure hope these numbers all match up for you. As I, as I told you, I've had a hard time leaving things uh, alone from one semester to the next, so I might uh, play around with some of these, but I'm pretty sure this is all uh, exactly what it should be. In other words, these are the deluxe drugs ratios that were in the sample problem from your notes that we have walked through. You have now confirmed the deluxe drugs ratios in that uh, middle column in this uh, slide. And you've also been able to uh, calculate the upper and lower ends of the acceptable range for the standard, which is that uh, average for the retail drug industry, and then to perform a quick analysis where for every ratio, you indicate whether it is good, bad, or neutral with respect to the industry average. So what we want to do now is to be able to uh, address these issues by category. You know, when we first started out reviewing uh, financial ratio analysis, we identified five broad questions that we wanted to answer about the company's financial position and performance. And each of those questions corresponded to a ratio category. And we identified liquidity ratios. Liquidity is concerned about the company's ability to pay its bills on time. Asset management, which focuses on the company's ability to generate sales from its assets. Profitability, which measured the firm's ability to control costs and extract profits from sales and assets. Uh, fourthly was debt management. The question is, is the firm, does it appear to be uh, overly reliant on fixed cost debt financing? And then finally, shareholder return. The broad question, uh, is the company generating sufficient returns on shareholders' investments? There are a number of, uh, well, particularly with the price earnings ratio, as we'll see uh, at a later time, there are other, let's say, insights or concerns that are addressed through at least that ratio. But those are the five questions, five broad categories, and now we have uh, been able to, in, a, um, in an example, so solve for the ratios for a given company, compare those to an industry average, and then perform a quick analysis. Now we want, what we want to do is wrap all this up in a package so that we have a coherent, uh, let's say, conclusion, uh, or arguments and then conclusion about those questions that we're trying uh, to answer. Well, the first thing we want to do is to, well, let's say here, put the pieces together to evaluate the firm's financial uh, position and performance relative to its industry, rather in this case to an index uh, or average of its competitors. Now, here's what we want to do. Here's the big picture. For each ratio category, identify the ratio category it falls into. Then, by ratio category, evaluate Deluxe's position and performance by identifying the relevant ratios for that category, explain what they tell about that firm's operation, and then conclude with an overall statement of evaluation that answers the question that that ratio category seeks to address. So, let's step back here and look at these ratios. What you would want to do then is say, okay, current ratio, it's a liquidity ratio, okay? The quick ratio is liquidity. But notice average collection period, inventory turn, fixed asset turn, total asset turn. These are all asset management ratios, aren't they? Debt ratio and times interest earned, these are debt management ratios. Net profit margin, ROA, ROE, those are profitability ratios and ROE does double duty. It's also shareholder return ratio. So we have two ratios here that address liquidity, four that address asset management, two that address debt, debt management, three that address uh, profitability, and this one uh, that, that uh, addresses shareholder return. So that's what you want to do next. And of course, in this situation, they all fell into nice little groups here. <laughs> but in a, uh, a real problem, they might be mixed up some, so you would need to be able to identify what ratio categories each fits into. The next thing then, is following these steps, is to, let's take a look at liquidity. 
Okay, the current ratio and the quick ratio both uh, are the, the only liquidity ratios that we've got here. So here's my suggestion as to a good um, summary response. Although the current ratio is in line with the industry average, the quick ratio is below the industry average, indicating the company may have difficulty paying its bills as they come due. Now, I think in your handout, uh, when you're filling this in, you've got certain uh, spaces left there that you can figure out how to fill those how to fill those in. But let's look at this response, and let me tell you why it was so good, besides the fact that I made it up. Uh, first of all, we identify the ratios, the current and the quick ratio, that speak to the issue of the firm's liquidity. Okay? We identify what our quick analysis revealed. Remember, we found out that the current ratio was neutral with respect to the industry average. The quick ratio was poor or bad. And so here, although the current ratio is in line with, it's neutral with respect to, it is comparable to, the industry average. It's competitive with, we could say. The quick ratio is below. It is poor with respect to the average. It is bad compared to the average. Um, this then, this one's okay, this one's bad. It indicates the company may have difficulty paying its bills on time. So notice we identify the ratios. We told basically what our quick analysis revealed about those ratios and then we concluded with an evaluation that answered that question that really liquidity analysis is all about. How, you know, is the firm in a good position to pay its bills on time? Well, we said they could have difficulty, okay? Or it appears they may, will have difficulty. We're not, we can't say they will. You know, we can't know the future. Uh, realize there's always some limitations that we face. But again, based on what we, our analysis here, of these two ratios and what they told us, they could have problems paying bills on time. So I've already indicated, I think, what makes this a good response. It identifies the ratios, current and quick. It tells basically what our quick analysis revealed. This current ratio is comparable to. It's not good, okay? It's simply uh, in line with. It's competitive. It's comparable to the industry average, whereas the quick ratio is poor. Okay, it's bad compared to the industry average, and this indicates or implies the company could have problems paying its bills on time. Um, notice, by the way, something I've done too. I'm, I'm building a case for my conclusion. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I can test you on this in an online format, to tell you the truth. I'm thinking about having a, well, never mind. I'll, uh, I'll let you know. I don't want you to have to be burdened by uh, my concerns or considerations. But uh, you want to note here that you know, we've got one piece of information that says, hey, things are okay. Another one says, oh, no, they're not. And we're going to come down on the more pessimistic side, not because we're pessimistic people. You know, business people tend to be optimistic. We're problem solvers. Uh, we're looking for problems not to make them worse, but to make them better. Uh, but in this case, you know, as certainly as a financial advisor or as an analyst, you know, if it's a toss-up here, you need to come down on the more conservative side of things, paint more of a gray sky than what we might call a, a blue sky picture of things. So um, that's why I'm coming down. I don't know, one piece of information says it's okay. Another one says, no, it's not. I'm going to come, come down on the side expressing concern that they could have difficulty uh, having uh, paying their bills on time. So there's liquidity. What about asset management? Well, we've got three ratios here concerned, concerning asset management, and um, they are average collection period, inventory turnover. I say three. I think they're all four. F fixed asset turnover and total asset turnover. Now, it's not normally the case that we have a problem uh, as we do here, but we do have the the, uh, well, not the problem. There is the issue that uh, we've got a total asset turnover, and this is sort of the composite of these. So here's what I'm telling you. Regardless of what these are here, this is going to tell us our overall answer. If the total asset turnover is good, there's our answer. If it's bad, there's our answer. If it's neutral, there. in other words, well, let's look, we'll look at this one and see. These are generally going to tell the same. This is going to tell the same story that these tell. But there could be one of these that's out of line with the rest. Um, 
But again, this is going to be our overall conclusion. So an evaluation might look like this. Although the average collection period is better than the industry average, okay? I can't say, by the way, it's above or higher because it's not. Actually, lower is better, isn't it, for the average collection period. But the average collection period is superior to, it's good with respect to, or compared to the industry average. The inventory turnover and fixed asset turnover ratios are worse than the industry average. As a result, the total asset turnover is below the industry average, indicating, here's our conclusion, the company is not generating sufficient sales relative to its assets. Okay? Now, um, I could say it has not been, but I'm speaking in the present tense here, knowing that we, you know, we got uh, sales information for the most part compared to balance sheet. Income, in, income uh, statement info, or data compared to balance sheet data info. So let's make, a, a, again, another point about what makes this a good answer. First of all, identify each of the ratios, average collection period, inventory turnover, fixed asset turnover, total asset turnover. Then I'm consulting. I reveal what my quick analysis showed me about that ratio. The average collection period was good, wasn't it? Better than the average, okay? But the inventory turnover, the fixed asset turnover, as well as total asset turnover were poor. Okay? So I'm telling what, and notice again, I'm telling what my quick analysis revealed, and then my total asset turnover was poor, you know, below the industry average, uh, or worse than the average. And this one is sort of a composite, so I mention it last, and I show that, uh, here's my conclusion. The company is not generating sufficient sales relative to its assets. I can't say it won't because I'm really dealing with the income statement information that's the past here. So I'm really putting this in the present tense, but uh, speaking as if the uh, income statement informa information is very recent. Um, but again, notice uh, I'm also building a case. I, I should have mentioned that to you earlier. Let me uh, say this, you know. If you have ever watched some of those uh, shows on TV involving law practices, you'll see attorneys building a case for something. That may vary early on. If there's some evidence contrary, let's say, to the defense of their, of their client, then they uh, may say, well, the prosecution has said that blah, 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 or we'll say this, but we're going to show why that's irrelevant. They go ahead and mention the bad news, and then they dismiss it. Well, that's one, th that's one way, in essence, of dismissing, for instance, in this first part, that the current ratio is okay. Although that's the case, here's what we're really going with, okay? Although the current ratio is neutral, the quick ratio is poor, and that's where, you know, so you're building a case for your conclusion. Well, we're doing the same thing over here. We've got one ratio, average collection period, that is out of line with the others. And so, although the average collection period, or while the average collection period is, a, is superior to the industry average, now these other things are worse, and so that's where we're coming down. So we mentioned that evidence, that uh, ratio in this case, that has, uh, that's contrary to the other ones. In, in essence, to get it out of the way and dismiss it, while we then mention, but look what, look what else has happened. So I'm just saying this is a, uh, it's a good way to, to build your conclusion. You want to be thinking in terms of an, a coherent, articulate argument in favor of, of your conclusion. And one, of course, that's uh, not preconceived. You're building it based on the evidence. But again, if you've got contrary evidence, it's a good idea to mention that first in order to essentially dismiss it and then build your case for your conclusion. So note the proper format. Identify the ratios relevant to that category, and you need to mention all of them. Don't just say something like all ratios, all profitability ratios. You have to, you know, say this. You have to mention all of them. Uh, say what your quick analysis revealed about those ratios, and then conclude with a, with a summary evaluation. And everything needs, for my purposes, to be in complete sentences. Again, since we're in an online setting, I'm not sure just how I'm going to handle this. Probably through some uh, multiple choice questions where you have some, some good answers and some better answers. And you're going to have to choose the best, uh, the best response. 
but I really like and value complete sentences. And in your homework, you will really need to use complete sentences to get full credit. I don't like uh, snippets and phrases and partial uh, answers. Uh, I call that caveman language, and I'm going to try to impose that uh, on you, the, the discipline of expressing yourself in complete sentences. Profitability. Notice that uh, ROE was neutral with respect to the industry average, but net profit margin and ROA were below average. And so once again, we're going to build a case that the company is not sufficiently profitable. Although the ROE is in line with the industry average, the net profit margin and ROA, by the way, it's fine to abbreviate these in an, any sort of a write-up, RO, if they're, if they're well-accepted uh, abbreviations, ROE, ROA, NPM, those are all well-recognized abbreviations. So we build our case indicating the company is not generating sufficient profit from sales or assets. Debt management, debt management's all about the question for our purposes, is, is the firm overly reliant on debt financing? Although the times interest earned is in line with the industry average, the debt ratio is well above the industry average, and that's not good, right? <laughs> The debt ratio is poor. Uh, it is inferior to the industry average. So that indicates the company may be using too much debt financing. And finally, shareholder return. The only ratio we had was ROE. It's in line with the industry average, indicating the firm is earning an adequate, a competitive return on shareholders' investment. It's uh, earning a return that is competitive with, comparable to uh, the uh, returns on the index, on the uh, on the standard. Let's see. Okay, I'm not sure why I have that twice in there, but there it is. Let me mention something here too. It's I don't have a separate uh, statement of this, but hopefully you can kind of pick up on what I call the language of the language of good, the language of bad, the language of neutral. The language of good is that, let me see if I can find one here. Um, oh, there's a, the debt ratio is, no, that's not good. Uh, ROE is in line with, well, let's talk about the language of neutral because I see here ROE is, it is in line with, it is comparable to, it's competitive with, it's adequate um, compared to, it's neutral with respect to. That's the language of neutral. The language of good is, let me see, there was one back here, what was it, the, there is, average collection period, is superior to, better than, in many cases, good would be um, uh, above, but we gotta be careful here because the average collection period is one of those few ratios where lower is better than higher. So we uh, might even see here, although the average collection period is below the industry average, and knowing ratios as we do, that would be, that would be a positive thing to say. But the language of good is typically going to be better. Well, you could say it's better, it's superior to, um, it's exceptional compared to the industry average. It's good with respect to the industry average. Um, and the language of bad, we've seen more of that here, and that's why you're going to see in your problems. It's no fun if you don't have some bad ratios to deal with. So in this case, the quick ratio is below the industry average. That's typically bad. In this case, we might say that they are worse than, they are inferior to the industry average. So that's the language of good, bad, and neutral that you want to be uh, picking up on here. And again, just notice it, note that in any uh, assignments that I give you, you're going to want to uh, be careful about um, using complete sentences where, where you're called to, to give an analysis. Okay, I hope this helps. As always, please email me with questions. I'm going to try to whip out another uh, video, and uh, I'm very willing to, to give it a go to try something new and different to help uh, where possible.